now, sir. Can I cut you here? Yes. Thank you, sir. My mom still call me this. My mom still call me in my, my this. I'm only really not good.
Please be seated. Welcome. Uh, we are glad that you're able to join us for this joyous day as we ordain Somo as pastor and install him as pastor of Southwest Lutheran Church. Uh, we are thankful for your presence here today. Uh, you are a blessing to us. And today is about blessings because pastors we know are a blessing to the church, uh, the people, the men whom God sends uh, to be the constant voice of God's word, both his gospel and his law, his challenge when that's needed and also to administer the sacraments, uh, to care for the, sh uh, the sheep, uh, to make sure uh, that God's people can continue to grow in faithfulness and love towards one another. We're gonna make our beginning today in the name, get the right hand, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And please pray with me. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for this day, and we give you thanks for your gift of pastors, uh, for all the workers whom you send into the field to care for your sheep and to search for those uh, which are yet still lost. Today, Lord, we thank you for Somo, uh, for sending him to us, for preparing him for the ministry. And as we ordain him today, Lord, we pray that you would work in us through your Holy Spirit, through your word, that we may honor him as a pastor of your church, that we may receive him, and that together we would set him apart for the good work which you have given him to do. Lord, for all of us gathered, let our ministry, uh, professional ministry as pastors and for the work that we do as individual Christians, let it be fruitful for the growth of your kingdom, uh, that our families, our friends, our neighbors, uh, would come to know your saving grace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
We continue now with our confession. Uh, and we confess our sins today so that uh, we know our God will hear us. Our God will be merciful. He will answer our prayers. He will forgive us as he is always faithful to do. Uh, as we just sang a song about the great narrative of, of God's work of salvation in history, how he sent his son Jesus and then established his church to carry the gospel into all nations and all peoples. The good news for us is that when we mess things up, God still works. And he is still faithful to us, even when we are unfaithful to him. And he will continue to um, bless his church, uh, to prolong it. Uh, and that today, uh, as an act of establishing a new pastorate within the people of God, and for their benefit, um, it's one more example of God's continued faithfulness in our lives today. And so we can confess our, word, our sins using the words of confession that you will find in your bulletins on the third page. We confess together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Well, our God is merciful on account of his son, Jesus Christ, and it's because of Jesus, because he came into this world, he took our sins upon himself, and he died on the cross and rose again, that we have forgiveness and salvation today. So now I, as a called and ordained servant of the word, in the stead and by the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I now forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We will continue now with the time of scripture reading. Our scripture reading is Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through chapter 4, verse 7. In Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What I'm saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were under age, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has also made you an heir. This is the word of the Lord. Ochoakle. Benglaba. Good afternoon. Go ahead, speak. Hello. I just want to highlight a couple of verses from our text today. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. God's time is different from our time. The children of Israel groaned under the rule of the Egyptians. Israel They waited 400 